I'd like to sort of, I'd like to switch gears and um, kind of walk you through what I think is a good opportunity of creating a professional online presence for yourself. Um, and so here's my point. I'm, I'm speaking for personal experience. I've, I've done this many, many times myself where I'm in the role of uh, a hiring manager. I'm looking for an engineering intern or two or three. Um, or I'm participating in the hiring process um, and we're so I've got a stack of resumes on my desk and we're trying to decide who to hire uh, or who to sorry who to at least who to call in for an interview and I can tell you from experience that employers and the HR team regularly include a search of a candidate's online presence like why wouldn't you today um, so if you're you know, so if, if your resume is on my desk and I'm looking at considering to hire you. I'm going to Google you. I am probably going to intentionally find your LinkedIn page. So, so first off, have a presence. But that doesn't mean that, you know, if you, if you aren't posting under your name on TikTok, for example, I wouldn't switch it over to make it visible. I would just recognize that if, if an employer can find you on TikTok, then be aware of the content that you're posting. If it's if it if it could be considered unprofessional from an employer's perspective, then that's going to work against you when they're trying to decide who to interview. Whereas if you are posting thoughtful content and positive content and something creative, then that also tells them something about you and it then it will reflect positively on you when they look at your resume and when they're trying to decide who to bring in for an interview. So, so it's important for you to know that. And I, you know, if you, if you hadn't sort of thought of it before, just be aware that that is now, I would say, common practice, at least in my experience, very common practice that we're going to look for you on social media and and have a have a look at what you got posted. There's no expectation. There's nothing that says, well, they must have, they must have all these accounts and they must be posting the following. Like there's nothing like that. It's more like, what does their online presence say about them? What does your on so think about it? What does your online presence say about you as a future employee? Okay. Um so I'm gonna spend a minute and promote the idea of you creating your own website. Um, many advantages to having your own website, like I said, this is content you control, right? It's 100% you. You can showcase your own work and it, and it would set you apart from the competition because of course, out of the 33 people who are dialed in this morning, I would, and, and even after I present this information, I would be impressed if six of you actually went off and created a website. But that means that those six of you who decide to do this have just set yourself apart from from 30 some odd people right and and that can look favorably for you uh, and like i say it, it lets you showcase your own work and i'll so i'll show you how you do that in a second okay so the very broadly i would recommend using a free site builder at this point, there's no need to spend money to do this. There's lots of good free site builders. I'll show you one. Uh, create a very basic about me page. Um, I would certainly add your own online resume. Um, I'll show you how you can do that quickly. Um, but you can also add more content, like links to your other social media accounts or and, and some of your own project work, pictures of the project you worked on, um, you know, if you're part of the Baja team or something like that, a picture of you and the team and a, and a short story about your Baja experience, all that stuff is really cool, right? And, and things that you can't include in a, you know, a standard boring, no visuals, no pictures, two page resume. This is only one example, but but I've tried it myself and I, and I like it. Um, I've looked at reviews of it. It's quite good, very solid. Um, it's really well supported. So, and it's free. So it's called 
Google Sites. And um, if you want to go to it directly, um, here, here's the uh, URL, or you can just uh, you can Google Google Sites. Um, it's actually through the OneDrive. Um, okay, maybe I'll just switch. So, you know, you you might be used to seeing a page like this. This is my sort of this is uh, my Chrome browser default web page. If I open a new tab, um, if I cut on my list and go to Drive, OneDrive. and say new more there's google sites okay so this is sort of a following the menu anyways this is how to get to the same place so onedrive more google sites brings you to a new page so right so this is completely free and here is a new site page so welcome to me whatever um well i'm gonna say i would um i would suggest and said uh putting your name here then as a As a site name, you need to give it uh, some unique website name up here. Um, okay, but but now you're off and running. It's that simple, and you can see there's uh, you can add text boxes, images, um, all kinds of links to different things directly on the site, um, and they just get added. So let's see. Uh, welcome to my site. You can add in um, menus, add in pictures. You can use free Google images. Um, let's see. Search for a professor. <laughs> Those are horrible pictures of professors. Wow. Oh, Professor, who the heck is, oh, Harry Potter. All right, then, fine. Uh, here, we'll take a nice picture of Einstein. Right, and so you so you can add all kinds of things. So here, so let me switch back to my sort of script and, and walk through what I'm thinking. There are, uh, so open a web browser, go to your Google account, go to sitesgoogle.com, new or follow the menu path that I talked about. Start with a blank slate. Um, there are templates available, um, like you were mentioning earlier, to build a website. If they have templates too, called Portfolio, Event, Help Center, et cetera. Personally, I don't like them. Like I tried this portfolio one and I thought it was really kind of old school and ugly. So I would honestly recommend starting with a blank one if you're going to do this. Um, if you get what I just showed you there, you, so you put in a page title, I would I would replace that with your name and then some short version of your name as the site name up here. And then, um, then you can add um, pages. So I, like you're, so you can have your cover page which is going to be like some simple welcome message and then some links. And one of the links should go to a resume. And so this is how I would recommend it. You can do it any way you want. Create a resume page. Uh, select the pages menu, click the plus icon, uh, which is down here. Uh, to insert a new page, I would call it resume. Um, it just helps with the navigation. And on the resume page, so this is what I've, what I've done here. These are called um, collapsible text. So as you saw from the menu on the side, um, okay, I don't have a menu shown there, but so, oh, well, from on this menu page, when you go to the page, 
you'll see there's a menu item to just click on collapsible text and and what it creates is um this little sort of pull down menu here like you could put your whole resume as one long text block but then that's not very current right from a website perspective so this is a little more professional um and then name each uh sort of block like this is what i would do as a professor my teaching experience my industry experience my education and training and then if the visitor clicks here, then it opens up and provides all the subtext and detail. So your resume can be this, right? So you get this nice clean page with a few headings, whatever you want to show in it. And the user can just click on each one that, uh, that they want to open up. Okay. Um, then, uh, so I would like, this is a nice clean format. You can choose any one you want. Like I, the one in my little, in that very vast, demo I showed you, I used this one, but here's one an example where I picked these three blocks with three text boxes. Um, it's very classic. Use it or pick another one, your choice. Um, so each of these blocks, each of these things that you can, that you put on here, they can be a picture, uh, like I just showed you where I put in a picture of Einstein. And, and then the picture is clickable and and you can add a link to take you somewhere. And so obviously one of them, you're going to want like a some picture. And when you click it, it'll take the visitor to your resume. But you can have, uh, you can also upload a YouTube video directly um, or a Google Doc. Um, and I found that a PDF works quite well. You can even upload calendar or you can have it go to a Google map or, um, or a Google calendar. So it's pretty, you know, pretty flexible about what you add here. Um, so, like I said, so you name in my example here, I would name the first block resume. I would upload some picture of yourself. Hey, there's when I was actually in, in the college in front of, uh, desks and students, which is great. Um, then if you click on your picture, you can resize it and things, but then there's also, so you can, you know, crop and adjust it, but then there's a link button. And so in, in my work example, I, I uploaded a picture of myself and I changed the link to point to the res my resume page. Okay. You can also choose different themes, like you can customize within this Google uh, Google Sites. Like there's not tons and tons of customization, but it's enough, I think, for you to show off your own kind of personality. Um, so here's, um, if you click the Themes button in the on the menu, the side little sidebar menu that's always there. If you click Themes, you can um, it just changes your look and feel. It doesn't change any of your content. It just changes sort of the appearance. So there's, you know, sort of a half a dozen choices, um, right? So I didn't do anything but change the theme, and it changes your background and makes it like either clean or jazzy or whatever you want. You can change the color scheme. You can also, um, with a little drop down, you can actually change the font. Like you can. So this is the background and the overall look. You can change the color of the stripe, but then you can change the font that's used here. So for me, like, and that's the that's the total amount of flexibility that this offers. But honestly, if you do this, it's clean, it's simple, it's effective, and it's all you need. If if you want to get fancier, go for it. But you could set this up this afternoon. Like, you could you could spend two hours this afternoon and have a website for yourself and up and running. Okay, there's other site builders such as Wix and Squarespace, um, which are also free. I'm not promoting any single one of these, like I have no affiliation with any of these. I'm just trying to give you, I have to give you concrete names of sites that, that are um, suitable for this purpose. Um, things like Wix and Squarespace, they offer more customization than this Google Sites, like that's kind of it. Um, so I'm just giving you sort of an idea, but, but by, like I said, my personal opinion is even the Google sites, um, simple and effective, and it'll, 
work just fine. Like there's no employer is going to look at it and go, oh my God, you know, this is such a boring thing. Okay. Um, so if you think about what, you know, what, okay, so what would I put on this website beside a resume? Um, and, and this is kind of tricky, right? You, not too much and not too little. You, you could just stop at resumes. That would be fine. Not very exciting. Likely, if you're pointing an employer to this, they've got your resume on their desk. And, and so putting a resume online isn't adding anything to them. It's easier for them to re just read it on their desk, right? So take advantage of the fact that you can provide more content for somebody who's looking to hire you. Um, okay, but before I leave resume, in this online version, you can be more creative. You can be a little more informal. You can include photos or, or you can even link to other things in your resume. Like if you said, you know, I worked on this project, include a picture of the project. If you said I worked as part of a team, and, and you have a picture, include a picture of the team. Um, there's no rules about the online resume and if, and they're likely gonna have your physical resume anyways, right? So um, you can be a little more informal and and a little bit more informative and, and take advantage of the online system to, to deliver a different kind of a resume to them. Okay, another um suggestion is to include an example of your writing so even if it's a uh, even if it's an assignment for a class if it's something that you liked and you got a good mark on it uh incorporate whatever your prof's feedback is tighten it up a little bit and and post it right it's your work so um include a, an example of what you can write any employer would be interested in skimming through that an example or two of a project that you worked on. Like I said, if you were part of the Baja team or something like that, or you have a hobby where you build, I don't know, you build fences or something. You know, it's a couple of attractive photographs that show that you're professional and competent and good with your hands or something. It, it makes you more personal. Um, okay, and then, so I thought about this. I think it would actually be reasonable here to provide links to your social media accounts. And, and in particular, I've said, the ones that you want them to find because it'll save them time and energy. It will show them that you do have an online presence. And because you've picked the ones that you want them to see, you, you know that you've looked at the content and you're comfortable with them reading your stuff. Um, and so to me, that just shows that you're, you know, they're, you're media savvy and you're helping them out, saving them time. They don't have to go off and do some other Google search, right? And uh, so you've taken charge of what they find. So those are, those are just ideas. And um, yeah, so in my little slide here, I've just, I've demonstrated, it could be a photograph. This is a YouTube video, some of my lectures I've posted on YouTube, um, right? So they can click the link directly on the site and play your play your um, YouTube video. Um, I'm <laughs> this, I printed this robot, but this isn't the robot I'm working on. But I'm you know I'm working on a um, pardon me for getting too close to the camera. I'm working on a 3D printed. Uh, servo motor controlled um, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six axis, five axis uh, robot. You know, so if I were a student and trying to get a job for a company, I could post pictures of my little project and show it off, right? Um, you can, a Google map that's movable and all that sort of stuff. Um, a PDF shows up as a little thumbnail here and you can click it and it fills the page. So there's a nice, so that's very, very clean. If you want to just upload a PDF of your resume, that works. Um, or whatever, or just links, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, for the social media links in Google Sites, I don't know if there's an easier way to do this or not, but um, this is the way I found. So I'll save you time and figuring out how to do this. 
insert a placeholder at the bottom of your page. So you'll see that, that on the menu because they don't have a direct thing where you can include, include social media links. That's not a direct menu function. But so what you do is you insert a placeholder and so that just creates this space to work and then insert, uh, what I did is I went to the, I, just like these things, when you say, I wanna add a picture, but instead of a picture of me smiling, I, um, I looked at the Google stock images and I just searched LinkedIn and I searched YouTube, whatever, um, icon, so LinkedIn icon, did a search, found it and made that the picture. And then I added a link, I connected a link to the picture to my YouTube channel and to my LinkedIn page, right? So um, that seemed to work. Okay, then um, sort of last but not least, you publish your page. So you, um, when you click publish, then it'll come up with this little box. It'll say, well, what's your, what's the web address that you want to do? So you can give it whatever name you want, as long as it's not already taken. And, and so here's the downside, if you will, of using a free website builder. So this is the same whether you're using Wix or Squarespace or Google Sites or any of the others, is it isn't your own address, right? It, it's the Google Sites address, and you just happen to be one page of a million that are sitting there. And, um, you know, which is fine. It just, nobody's going to find this on their own. Uh, so it just means that you would have to share this as a hyperlink in a resume or an email to somebody, right? It, you'd have to have some way of sharing this link with them because they're not, it's not easy enough. You're not going to say, oh, if you want to find me, I have a website here. It's sites.google.com slash view slash my name. Um, so that's the, the one downside with this. Um, enter address, like your name, you might need to try a variation. Like I, if I said B Nelson or Nelson, those are taken. Um, I think if I had, I think I tried Professor Nelson, that's taken. Um, so I had to make it Professor B Nelson, and then that was okay. And it, it tells you, like the, this little check mark shows up when it's actually available for your use. I will say though, you should seriously consider paying to register your own name as a domain name, and then use that as your, as a custom URL. So you make it easier to visit your site with a custom URL. You, like you can't, uh, you can't click this and add your own domain name if you don't already own it. So, but there are cheap, um, domain registrars like uh, what are, actually, I think one of those called cheap names uh, like cheapnames.com um, but I'll, I'll leave that to you I don't want to recommend one there's pros and cons of all of them but um, I would I would suggest finding one that operates in your country it's probably a better idea or if you're trying to do is this Canadian site you know find a Canadian domain name registrar. Uh, but for a site that's going to have your name, so it'll be like professorbnelson.com or professornelson.ca, that's probably going to be cheap, right? Because it's not the sort of very popular thing. It's not like you're trying to register some fun new buzzword, you know? Um, and so I've registered a bunch of names for myself and for companies that I've run businesses that I'm responsible for and so on. Um, and I don't, hmm. I don't know if I've ever paid more than $10 a year, like for the name. T typically the name is like four bucks or six bucks or nine bucks a year, which is insane. <laughs> and, and so you own that domain name, it becomes yours. So it means if, you know, if I said professornelson.com, or professornelson.ca, uh, then I own that name, and and then you can go to create a free web page, enter this custom URL, uh, professornelson.ca, and then you have your 
what you know your own about me page showing off what you can do and it's very easy to feel for people to find and if you're phoning somebody or you're writing in an email to someone um and and say you know i invite you to check out my web page at professornelson.ca and provide as a hyperlink but people can read it and go oh uh, right it's easy to remember so i i would recommend it it's it's cheap i mean it's going to cost you some money but relatively speaking it's cheap if this is something you want to do okay um yeah so here's my invert invitation to you guys um if if anybody wants to follow what i suggested here and you like you think that would be cool then um you know, I invite you to share your website with the rest of us. You, it all starts about advertising, right? And you want people to visit your site and then Google sees the more people who visit your site, the more traffic you get, the higher that goes in a search engine. So I invite you to, um, I've got a little panel here. Um, if you take a picture of this page while I've got it up, there's a um, Q code, QR code um, and yeah, so it'll show up. So right now, like, right, it's a blank slate ready for you guys to put a just put a connection just like here, a little, a little connection to your website. Um, and then anybody can click on it and go to the site that you've built. And so there's my little demo site, right, where there's my little YouTube video. That's uh, what I was saying. Here's my, you know, my resume. Now I haven't filled anything in. I, but this is how that would work, right? You, little drop downs. Um, takes me to my LinkedIn page. Takes me to my YouTube channel. Uh, or goes back to the home page, right? So it's, as you can see, it's clean. It's my simple design looks good on a mobile device and so on. Okay. So I know that's a lot of me talking, but what do you guys think? Is that, is anybody interested in doing that kind of a thing? Is it cool? Is it uh, yawn or what? It's very informative, Professor. Surely we can, we can try all these and it will be a lot of help. Because we don't actually, I didn't know about this, and it looks cool. Yeah, that's like so. Yeah, so thank you for that. And I like to me that's professional. Yeah. And, and this, this, what you're seeing here, that took me about twenty minutes. <laughs> like twenty minutes, boom. <laughs> it's so it, it, it's it's quick, and so you put it. Of course, you. I haven't got any real content in behind it, right? but it, but this isn't a huge time investment. Over the Christmas break, you, you could you could be online, and like I say, the the website URL address kind of lousy. Like that's not something that people are going to find without a link. Um, so I would, yeah, I would go to. Cheap names. Name cheap. I mean, there's Hostigator, Name cheap. I mean, there's, there's. I mean, there's tons of them. I don't know. If, like, and I don't know if these guys are brilliant or lousy. But um, okay, what? Anybody else? How many comments? Thoughts? Professor. Yeah. It is not published yet, right? Mine is. Online. It, it is yes oh, so if i i search your name on google ah see i don't know if you'd find this though because this is the thing i've done there's nothing there is nothing in this website that google likes okay i haven't written any good content nobody's visited it but me mm -hmm. there's no keywords defined mm. so I'll bet you if you looked for a, if you did a Google search for me, you're not going to find much. So the thing is, uh, 
uh, whoever decides to make a site like this must try to keep it relevant, right? To yeah. updating and uh, to, to make it findable. Circle. Right, right. That's just it. So here, okay, so I just Googled Professor B. Nelson because that's sort of sort of what I use generally for me as a professor. That is my YouTube channel. Uh, that is my LinkedIn. But that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. That's not me. You know, uh, none of those me. <laughs> but okay, so at least, hey, that's, you know, that's not bad, actually. I come up, that's not me. None of those are me. Oh, look at that. Hey, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, all, that's what, there's tons of competition. Uh, I'm not the only Professor B. <laughs> Nelson. But okay, but my YouTube channel, actually, so my YouTube channel actually gets some visits. So, so Google likes it. Um, and Google likes videos. Those are interesting and compelling. And Google has commercials on YouTube. So Google is, there's an incentive for Google to point people to YouTube because they get advertising revenue. Um, I'm actually impressed that I show up as a, a top LinkedIn search, but, but this, this website fr from Google's perspective, it's like, it's a big yawn. There's no reason to promote that. Um, and that's why I say, if you, if you registered, like I could do professor nelson.college. Well, okay. So these are a little more expensive. Professor nelson.net 30, but okay. But still like, don't spend $160 a year. That's insane. But Professor Nelson dot college, Professor Nelson, Professor Nelson dot CA, 15 bucks a year, Canadian. $15 a year. Like I, sp I spend that, <laughs> I spend that on Starbucks every two weeks, you know? <laughs> so, and I, and I totally get it that, you know, for you, $15 a year, is a bigger deal, but, but you can also, it is only a one year contract. Like you're not committing to paying $15 and 40 cents per year for the rest of your life. You're only doing it while you need this website. And I would argue, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a good thing to, for you to have while you're searching for a new job. So hopefully $15 and 40 cents for one year is all you ever need. <laughs> And then you'll be employed and you'll become a rock star <laughs> and you won't have to advertise yourself. <laughs> yeah. And sorry, somebody else has had a thought. Any other comments? Any other comments? Just to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> awesome. But, professor. Yes. This would be nice to put in a, in a card, for example. Mm -hmm. So instead of going searching on LinkedIn or Instagram, the, uh, the person just go to the place and it is a hub for the other exactly. places. Exactly, right. Like imagine how beautiful it would be if you had a business card that had your name and stuff, uh, you know, your cell number, your email address and a website, professornelson.ca or whatever, you know, um, your name dot, dot com, your name dot ca, your name dot me, like that's beautiful professor nelson dot me like this is <laughs> that's that's even better seven dollars and 56 cents a year for professor nelson dot me you know or for uh sarah gomez dot me it because then it's very clear this is this is about me this is an about me page and and from their business card they go oh sarah gomez dot me boom and then they got there you go you know when they're whatever you're up and running and you got a, they got pictures of you and a little video it could be a, like YouTube videos are free to post. So just post a, uh, an about me video on YouTube, sit in a fine, a comfortable ch chair, nice lighting and, and say, hi, I'm Sarah Gomez. I'd like to just quickly introduce myself. Uh, thank you for visiting my site. This is why I'm an awesome person. These are a couple of things I'm interested in. Here's a picture of my cat. Bloop. And employers, if, if you are on the short list of candidates, I'll say from my own experience, from a, personally, if I had a candidate 
who pointed me to a site like this and they had a quick little a comfortable introduction like that on YouTube and a link to their resume and stuff, I would call them in for an interview. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would put them at the head of the class. Okay, so like I said, uh, if you if you're interested, create a website and I'd you know I'd love to see it. Uh, it'd be cool. So if you if you follow this QR code, it goes to this Padlet, and then you can um, add a link to your site to the Padlet. It's a public thing, and and then other people can take a look at it and check back in a check back in a month and, or sometime in Christmas and see who's see who's posted. All right. Other than that, I am done. I'm done. Um, I'm glad you guys hung on today. I recognize that this is second last week. You're in the final crunch. You got a ton of assignments to do, <laughs> including for me. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, but thank you all. And I'll see some of you on Friday and the rest of you next Monday morning.